When presented with a problem, I often think about a million different ways you can solve it. This bookshelf, for example, was in fact not intended to sit on the floor. It was a part of the Drexel Leisure series and is missing the bottom half. To solve this problem, the solution is pretty easy. We just need to add some legs, but I want to take this a step further. I want to add a furniture base, but I don't want to use a tape measure or a ruler. Now, I don't want to ignore the fact that you can literally buy legs that just screw into the bottom of furniture. That is one of the easiest ways to add legs, but in this case, I want to add a base that looks more organic for the overall look of this already really beautiful piece. And for that reason, I'm going to make a base using walnut. I purchased these walnut pieces off of Amazon, and I'll link them below if you're interested. But I highly recommend checking out your area though for any local lumber suppliers if it's available to you. One requirement of the no measurement base is working with wood that is already squared off or has squared sides. The first step to creating your base is to lay your wood out on the piece to help visualize it. I usually flip the piece over and set the apron and legs on the base in a way that I find visually appealing with the piece. You need to consider a few things for this, such as how you want to attach the aprons to the legs. Do you want them closer to the front, closer to the back, or centered? Do you want the base to be flush with the outside of the piece? Will it cause any structural issues when you're securing the base? This is also the time to determine if you want to add a tapered leg to the piece or other things such as a curved apron. I'm going to make this as simple as possible due to the shape of the piece. No angles and the aprons will be centered on the legs. I always start with the legs. I cut the height, and if I'm adding a taper, I'll also make that cut. You do not need measurements for this. Make your mark using a straight edge. I use a speed square, and then you'll cut your leg to size. Once the first leg is cut to size, you use that as a template for all the others, tracing the height onto the next piece on a flat surface. Make sure you check the height of all the legs once all four are cut and trim up any that are not the same height. Next, I make the longer apron cuts. I align them behind the front legs after I put them in place to make my mark. If the ends of your lumber are rough, I recommend shearing off the end to make it smoother before making this cut. Once the first piece is cut, I transfer that to the back piece and make the same cut. Always check and make sure they fit according to what you envisioned after making your cuts. Remember, I'm not using a tape measure for any of this, so making the longer cuts first and then the shorter ones sometimes works out in that you have leftovers for the smaller parts. The same concept applies here. I align the sides behind the legs and make my mark to cut. I transfer the mark onto the second piece and I double check and confirm they are the same width. This is important on the aprons as it will affect the squareness of your base if they are different widths. Once your cuts are made, you just need to join the wood pieces together. There are many different ways to join wood together and I'm not going to cover all of them in this video. I generally either use dowels or pocket holes. 
For leg bases, I like to use dowels because they tend to be stronger and last longer overall. Dowels are also what was commonly used in most furniture pieces, so my hope is that this makes it look more like it belongs with the piece. Because I'm using dowels, I need to mark the pieces where I want the dowels to go. The self-centering dowel jig will align the dowels to the center of the piece, but I need to make sure that the dowels on the legs and the aprons are drilled in the same place so they fit together. I drill two 5 8 inch holes on the apron sides and the legs for each connection. The self-centering dowel jig is pretty easy to use. Just align where you want to drill with the marker on the inside of the window and then drill your holes. I do a dry fit with all the dowels in place before gluing up the piece and clamping it to dry overnight. To attach the base to the bookshelf, I always use screws just in case it needs to be removed later on. For this reason, I opted to use my Craig jig since I have an entire container of pocket hole screws on hand. The self-centering dowel jig can be used to drill recessed screw areas to attach the base as well. The entire base was hand sanded down with 220 grit and then wiped with a tack cloth to remove the dust. I waited to apply the finish to the base after it was attached so that I could apply the finish to the underside of the bookshelf as well. I used General Finish's Armor Seal in satin and I applied three coats, sanding with 400 grit sandpaper between coats. Furniture sliders were also added to the base. This is going to elevate the wood off of the floor so that when the floors are being cleaned, it doesn't potentially affect the furniture legs. For the finishing touches, I cleaned the piece with Murphy's oil soap first, and then I did another round of Howard's orange oil on the piece, simply because I like the smell, and to add some extra hydration in the drawers. We are almost to 10,000 subscribers. 
and I know some of you aren't rhymers, but I wanted to say that I'm happy you chose to watch my videos today. If you've made it this far in the video, be sure to boop that like button, and if you want to see a modified version of this bass, check out the video on the screen.